Welcome to Breaking Your Barriers on our segment, Hanging Out with Local Heroes. And today, I'm telling you right now, it is an absolute honor to introduce my guest. But before I introduce her, let me go ahead and give you guys a little background about this amazing, and there's only one way to put it, she is badass. Simple as that, she's badass. And here's the reason why. This very down-to-earth young lady, she is on a TV show giving parenting tips every fourth Monday. She has also published two books. She's also part of Coach V's team. She is a certified neuro-linguistic programming practitioner. She wants to spread the knowledge of what she's gained in the many years of being a parent, going through the struggles, going through the hardships, going through the adversity and the challenges. Her goal is to empower every mom and every dad globally. She doesn't want you guys to go through the struggle. She doesn't want you guys to have the anxiety. She doesn't want you guys to go through depression. She wants you to have a smooth transaction when it comes to dealing with your children. Now, with that said, it gives me amazing, amazing pleasure to introduce Karen. But before I introduce her to say her words, Karen, do you have those two books? Because I got to show you off. You're, you're amazing. I happen to have them. I have Mama's Gotta Let Go, How to Let Go Without Losing Your Sanity, keywords without losing your sanity, because you will lose your sanity, but there are tips in here to navigate that journey. And during the pandemic, I wrote 100 parenting tips inspired by the pandemic. And all of these tips are on, we discussed earlier on TikTok, on my YouTube channel, and on Instagram to pick up these books. They are on Amazon. I'm going to leave the link in the description. I'm also going to leave the link with regards to getting in contact with Karen. So if you'd like to get in contact with Karen, I'm going to leave all of her information in the description below. If you guys have any questions, feel free to post it here on YouTube and I'll make sure she gets those questions. But yeah, definitely connect with her. If you know a parent that needs her assistance, her help, her expertise, reach out. Don't be shy. Don't be embarrassed. She's got what you need. Karen, go ahead and drop some wisdom on us, young lady. Wow, what an amazing introduction. I, I don't think I've ever received such a glowing introduction. Thank you so much. It is an honor to be here, Ricky. And I think um, I will share, I just did Living It Away less than an hour ago, the top three life skills that I lacked to um, provide for my girls. And I'm here to tell you, I have a 19 year old and a 25 year old and there is hope. If there's not a certain age where you think, oh man, I messed up because they are 17 or they are 27. I think by instilling these skills, some of them, yes, it is good to introduce certain skills. Um, one of them does relate to what Ricky does. And my first skill is how to talk to people, not just talking to people, but how to emotionally connect with them. And as a public speaker, you know that it is not easy. So I recommend that parents, and I know it can be scary for their children too, order when they go out. My daughter would drop a fork and I would make her, you know, like, if you want a fork, you have to ask. And she was so shy. She would say, that's all right. So she'd have to eat with her knife. You know, we were, we were not going to enable her. One day she wanted to, or she did not want to order Starbucks. She wanted me to do it. I said, if you don't order it, we're going home. Worst temper tantrum ever, but guess what? She always ordered her drink. She had it on her phone, showed it to the person. And now I'm making her, you know, right? You have to call the doctor, make an appointment. Now you have to talk to professors and teachers, which can be scary, but have your child get out of their comfort zone. Number two, which is hard for parents, is to make your child responsible for managing their own life, their assignments, money managing, which can be done with a five-year-old. You give them a dollar, they want something that's $1.25. Oh, sorry, you're going to have to wait. And that's a hard lesson. My dad would do that. I mean, in the 70s, not dating myself, but I would want the 35 cent um comic book. Yes, they used to be 35 cents and only had 25. And I told my dad, it's, it's only 10 cents more. Well, so I, I was a little spoiled, but when it came to money, my dad was just, well, you have to, you have to wait. And as a child, you're thinking it's just 10 cents. 
So I know a lot of kids are smart and they know how to manipulate, right? Everyone has mm -hmm. latest iPhone, mom, dad, and then you feel like, okay, what's another, what? It's $800, but you know, let's do the family plan. And so I have kids, students. Oh, my, my iPhone broke, but you know what? It's not a big deal because I know it'll be replaced. And when wow. we teach kids that that is entitlement and we don't realize that if we do not instill accountability, responsibility and disappointment, because if they do not experience disappointment and failures, guess what? You can't build resilience if you are always reminding your children, hey, did you do that assignment? Did you study for the test? Wait a minute. What is this D on your report card? I had someone, you know, right? Oh, we do not wait. No, 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 no. You got a, you got an 89 that is so close to, um, right? You didn't get that A. What? So what we're doing when we give those very, you just, you don't think that they're hurtful messages, but you are chipping away at your child's self-esteem because they define their grades, right? They define their value mm -hmm. and their worth. And I did that. You know, I still, I was telling Ricky, whenever I do an interview, whenever I write a book, I think I'm going to be graded. And Ricky assured me that he wasn't going to grade me. This is fun. But in the back of my mind, because I, and that's where neuro-linguistic programming, I have to do it to myself, not just to my clients, but really rewiring those limited beliefs that stop us from taking risks right stop us from just even going after our dreams because if we allow that fear of failure and then third tip is teaching your kids how to solve their personal problems without rescuing them when you constantly re i had a mom said you know what i had to drive all the way from down to drop off his water bottle for soccer practice why well he's going to be thirsty and <laughs> and, I, and I've done that. I stopped tutoring to drop off my daughter's pencil case. And then I thought, you know what? I'm not doing this. Mom, I, I didn't have a pencil. Did you ask a teacher? No. And then I had to tell myself, the world is not going to end. And someone gave her a pencil, you know? And if you, your child wakes up late, this is a hard one. Your child wakes up at two o'clock, misses the entire day of school. Let them miss the entire day of school because they will know that it is natural consequences. And that's a hard one. I mean, even today, the other day, my daughter's class is online at 1.30. At 1.11, I was like, okay, um, just wanna let you know that um, I'm gonna be leaving. Oh my gosh, is your class starting? Like in 20 minutes? Yeah, I set my alarm. And in my head, I'm thinking, did she set her alarm for 1.28? But you know what? It's not my journey. We must trust our child's journey and not feel responsible for what our children do. Failures, it's on them and it's an opportunity to grow, right? Not something to suffer from, not like a, oh my gosh, you what? And just those words, you know, those are words that, that can rip a child's self-esteem and that's when mental health issues can develop as an adult, right? You don't, you don't feel comfortable setting boundaries, but. We can go on and on, Ricky. <laughs> we can listen to you on and on. And let me let me tell you, so far from what I've heard, it has been amazing. And the reason why is for all of you who are listening right now, think about it this way. What Karen just shared is, number one, teach your children about responsibility. What they do has consequences. May it be good, may it be bad. However, our goal is to reinforce them with positive reinforcement. Now, we're not saying keep them away from failure, which is the second point that Karen made, which is accountability. They need to be accountable to somebody. If they screw up, who are they accountable to? Us as parents. And not only are they accountable to us when they screw up, they're accountable to us when they take their responsibility serious, whether it be for school, whether it be for cleaning the house or whatever they're doing, or hanging out with friends and saying, you know what, I'm not gonna smoke. Why? Because my mom and dad told me not to. I don't care about that peer pressure stuff. I can get over it. And the third thing, which is beautiful, you do not solve their problems. You let them use creativity to find a way out of their own challenges. May it be a water bottle or a pencil case or forgot their homework. They need to find a creative way to get their homework turned in 
or hopefully not cheating, not cheating. <laughs> and, <laughs> not cheating. <laughs> but, but what you shared, what you shared is ridiculous wisdom because yeah, responsibility, accountability, creativity. That's the one thing missing from children nowadays because they're still stuck on their phone seeing other people's creativity, not creating their own. Karen, that's amazing. Now I'm going to ask you, how did you even get into this? Because being a coach for parenting is not easy. And you shared it with me when we spoke earlier that, hey, I'm still going to screw up. Mm -hmm. However, I'm still going to grow. I'm still going to progress and I'm still going to learn from those mistakes. What caused you to get into this ridiculously amazing and needed field? It all started with my journey being a special ed teacher. Mm -hmm. I burnt out. I was teaching at Kahimohala, which is a psychiatric facility. And um, I decided I, it was scary because I, even though I had mental health specialists near me, um, I did not feel safe, right? I had kids who had uh, criminal records. I had kids as young as, um, you know, 12. I had the older kids, 12 through 18. Mm -hmm. And so in 1999, um, I decided to leave the special education field and I started Brain Builders. So my business is to build brains. I still do it. I was going to um, retire or quit in um, 2020 and then the pandemic hit and I was just received so many calls. I was resistant in doing virtual tutoring. I decided to get out of my comfort zone. And once I did um, virtual tutoring, I realized how stressed out parents were and that I was administering parenting advice ever since 1999. As an educator, I was wearing a parent coach hat, but I didn't realize that's what I was doing. So once I got certified in life coaching in November of 2019, it's interesting how right as the pandemic hit, I published A Mama's Gotta Let Go in February we were in quarantine in March. Funny how I think the universe leads us to where we, we are needed. So um, parent coaching, difficult. A lot of parents don't realize the necessity for it. I think when they think things are running smoothly, like you don't go to the doctor when, you know, you only go when, when something is wrong. But with parent coaching, if we do not, and we are humans, like you said, we make mistakes. And if we do not realize, you know, people spend a ton of money on tutors, on private baseball, basketball, football training, but they don't see that investing in themselves <clears throat> will create and make a difference in how resilient, how responsible, and even how respectful children are because every word we say will affect your child. I have my daughters now, remember when I was 10 and you scolded me for this and that, when they were 10, I'm thinking, you know, we don't realize that what we say and what we do, I have a funny story. Do you know the Dole Plantation in Wahiwa? I don't remember saying this, but I told my daughter that you need to complete the maze in order to get the pineapple ice cream. I swear I said it's a reward. And she said, no, you said that it's a necessity to do the maze in order to do the ice cream. So when she was about 12, she said, mom, you can get the ice cream before without doing the maze? And I said, of course, you just go up there and, and um, so you, you, you lied? All these years you lied? I said, I, I didn't lie, I said it was a reward. No, you didn't. So no matter what you say, what matters is what your children heard, right? And so when I interviewed my 19 year old, I said, what do teens want? And she said, to be heard, to be understood and not judged. And that's the same as us. As parents, we feel judged. Your child fails a class, which happened to me. I'm an educator and I'm a parent and people think that my children will get straight A's. She went from straight A's, suffered major anxiety. I suffered anxiety because her anxiety. Mm -hmm. My oldest one went off to college. Um, talk about letting go. No one prepares you. People talk about the childbirth pain. I've had moms tell me it's, a, it's 10 times worse because you have no control. You have no idea what they're doing, right? 21, going to Vegas. I'm getting calls. My daughter feels so close to me that she shares a lot. Mm. I, don't, I don't know if I want to hear some, some of the things she shares. <laughs> but, but my friends tell me, wow, she must feel really close to you. I have to tell myself, right? Listen, don't judge. I interviewed a grandma. I listen, but I don't offer opinions. 
that is hard. Ooh. And that is the difference between a parent who might cause parental alienation. I didn't even know about this. And parental alienation is when you have an adult child who doesn't want to visit you. An adult child who does not stop by and bring your grandchildren all because of the emotional disconnection or the growing resentment that takes place throughout childhood. And it could be something that you didn't even mean to say when you you know, the child was 13. So I'm noticing if you apologize lately, I've been doing a lot of apologizing. I admit I was an enabled only child who felt the world. The joke is the world does not revolve around you. Who does it revolve around? Mom, you know, and it's, and it's a joke. It is a joke. Some, well, I, I, I you know, some of them it's a joke, but it's hard for me, even as a, I was telling Ricky at 57, I still am shocked when things don't go my way. It's like, wait a minute, Spectrum, you cannot stop working for my parent <laughs> summit. No, <laughs> it's my birthday and it's my summit, you know? Hey, Karen, I need, I need to pause real quick. Y'all, that's the truth. She didn't make a mistake. I didn't edit the sound. She is 57. And I own it. A lot of women say, you know what? I don't want to say my age. I tell my daughters, you can tell mom's age. I don't. I didn't expect them to, you know, because one of my daughter's um, friends came by and I didn't have makeup on and she goes, wow, your mom looks like 35. And then my daughter is very like rigid, black and white. So you think that she had me when she was 11? And I thought, you know, I think she meant it as a compliment. Chelsea, <laughs> you, you do not. <laughs> but, you know, it is, um, it's interesting, this journey that we lead and the people, don't you believe this? The people that are in your life that keep you humble, Absolutely. that you feel... Why are you criticizing? They are there to help you yep. grow, build resilience. And that's the hardest thing about my journey. When my children say, wait a minute, wait, you, you wrote this letting go. Why are you not letting go mom? Right. Or aren't you, aren't you the parent coach? Why are you having a, a meltdown and not being the parent? You know, mm -hmm. I, I've had my, my older one, speak to me like she's the coach and I think wait a minute why do I feel 12 and someone said wow she should um join you know coach V's team because she is in that but I've introduced Eckhart Tolle and I've introduced Wayne Dyer I've introduced the law of attraction when she was 16. Mm -hmm. I was probably in my mid-20s and then with life experience divorce um I I own in this book I talk about um my suicide attempt at age 30 you know and it's like I can relate to people who feel that they it's life is hopeless. And I'm here to remind them that no matter what struggle you're going through, they're not alone. You know, we have a mutual friend, Deslin Hockeyus, who always reminds us, you are not alone, you are enough. And we have to stop putting ourselves on this comparison chart where we feel that, oh, we should be accomplishing more. I mean, sometimes, I feel like I'm behind, right? You guys are all so young. And Destin reminds me, stop stop telling your age. I mean, I, I'm not telling my age as out of embarrassment, but I'm telling you folks that we are constantly growing no matter how old we are. And we have to show our children. You know, you know how I, I don't I don't um defend, I mean, you know, when moms say, I don't want to tell my age. That message is to children that it's embarrassing to say that you're older or that you're a certain age. Mm, we do not mean to say things to our kids. However, I want you to realize something, parents. Some of the things that we say scars the children or at least creates a cut that they're going to remember. Now, does that mean that it's irreconcilable? No. No. It gives you a chance to develop an even closer relationship with your child. So when you said that, there was a thing that my mom did to this day that I still remember. She didn't have a 12th birthday party for me, but she did for every one of my siblings. And I asked her, I go, why didn't you do that for me? She goes, oh my God. She goes, I didn't. I go, no. She goes, but you're, you're 40 now. I said, I know. And I'm still crying. <laughs> so my point is, it's, you know what it is? It's yeah. the story that your mind told you. Yeah. And it has nothing to do with reality. So I tell like five-year-olds and they'll tell me, but my brain is like, I don't think my brain is mature enough. And I tell them my brain's not mature enough sometimes because we cannot believe every thought that enters our mind. If our right. children just learn that, 
And parents who say, right, in your head, your child can feel, my child is a loser. I don't know if they're ever going to be able to navigate adulthood wow. because they can't even turn in an assignment, right? And you say that in front of me and in front of your child, like, you know what, they, they need help. They're just so disorganized. They're failing this class. They, and so I, I, I take those kids aside and say, you know what, that, that is not, it wasn't right. I can't tell your dad what to say or do, but they need to know. And I always tell them, I know you can like, you know, have that thought and just ignore what your parents say, because you guys do that half the time anyway, you know, make a joke out of it and not have, but certain things will, like you said, it'll, it'll be a scar that they pick at and that scab, whether you're 40, I had someone who was in their seventies say, you know, as a grandma, she remembers when her mom blamed her, you know, like something that happened with her siblings, mm -hmm. be something that, you know, and you, you don't realize, right. When you say, you know, you're 16, you should know better. That, and that's something that, you know, you're old enough, you're mature, you graduated from college, you are an adult. And so my daughter once said, well, you're, you're mom, you're the mom. And I said, that, that means, but, but I will explain that I do, I did raise my girls telling them that I had mom powers because my daughter would say, how did you know that? So I'll have eyes in the back of my head and I'll have mom powers. So recently I said, well, the mom powers might kick in like that your baby has to be at least a year old. I'm sure I'll change it eventually. <laughs> <laughs> it'll, it'll it'll constantly modify because there is no right age when you've mastered life right thank you i'm no longer thinking about that 12 year old birthday anymore. yeah <laughs> and did it define you you know i had a, a mom and dad they were so they had an only child and that that son did not have a birthday party because both parents had their own businesses and they had to move and so he just had a mochi for his birthday that was it didn't have a cake but they made the best out of that mochi, you know, put that candle on and they were from Canada actually, but they decided to do like a little local thing. And the child, when you make that, you know, but even if it, if then at 40, you know what you could do? Like Pooh Bear, happy unbirthday. And you celebrate it and you say something like, this is gonna make up for it. It could just be like your favorite treat, your favorite ice cream. But I'm realizing now it is never too late. I've apologized for things that I would never have thought of was detrimental to my child's upbringing. And amazingly, oh. research shows that you can apologize to someone in the grave. You can write a letter, crumple it up, and just say, you know what? And I've been doing my dad pass in 2016. I've had to really forgive myself for not being there for him to take care of my mom he was the sole caregiver and at first i'm thinking i should have said this but it is never too late even if you are not in um in you know you, you don't have a very good relationship with your children write it for your own personal healing and your brain will slowly rewire it's not going to happen overnight but it's something that needs to be done because our brains are it's they're very it's very malleable no matter how old you are even recently neuroplasticity shows that the parts of your brain that are damaged can grow it's kind of like our skin that's right right you have like a scar but your skin is constantly growing and that's what i'm here to tell parents don't allow your child trauma your childhood to affect your child and even your parenting style Right. A lot of us say I was raised with a belt, with the slipper. I tell the look, my, my daughter went to work and didn't know what the slipper method was or, you know, the, yeah. the she doesn't know pigeon. What is slip up for one thing? Yeah. And they criticize her. My I don't know pigeon very well. I, I was raised in Guam, at Anderson Air Force Base, age four to nine. So when I came here and I was accused of talking to like the Howley, did not know how to understand culture shock. So we're teaching my children. Um, my older one went to Kamehameha, so she kind of knows it. But still, the other day was like cockroach. What happens if someone cockroaches your stuff? Cockroach. So we, you know, like pigeon to the max. I want to, I want to order that again. But I had a six foot one. He was a Caucasian kid that was born and raised in Mount and on Kauai, and he said, "I not, I need a napkin." And I don't know why it sounds so like, "Why didn't I know?" And he was so upset. What a napkin, Miss? I need a napkin. And I was, I was like, "What?" It was a napkin napkin but i thought you and that causes 
frustration when you cannot communicate, right. which is what Ricky's forte is, and you think you can communicate. I don't know if you're aware of this, but men's emotional maturity hits at mid forties. Their brain might mature in the mid twenties and women, um, fortunately, unfortunately, um, grow emotionally, you know, like earlier, but it depends on your life experience because your brain might be mature, but how many emotional like circumstances, challenges. And so it could be society. It could be social media. Cause some parents, I look at them and they are, they, they're just on it. They might practice compassion, but their children's brains and just their social influences, they look up to someone and they know that it's not good to vape or they know that it's not good to smoke. And I've told my daughters this, if your best, best friend says, hey, just try it once. My daughter was the only one who didn't drink at her, um, her friend's graduation party. And there's auntie saying, try Kahlua, try a lick here, which is not as high in alcohol content. And she goes, mom, I just put the cup here and there. You know, at 19, um, you know, people, when she worked at Times, it's like, I know you tried it. Which is better, this or this? And she goes, mom, I tell them and they don't believe me. Because most 19-year-olds have had more than their share graduation night or just in general, right? Yes. So it's practicing compassion and just know that they are incapable. Some of them, if you're 16, think about it. How were you at 16? And that kind of makes you, right? How so emotionally you mature so were 16. you? <laughs> <laughs> and you know, and I was a straight A student. I just shared the other day with someone that I took the car and I was supposed to only stay in the air. And I thought, why not go to, to Waikiki just once? And I looked at the odometer. I was deathly afraid. And I almost went up a one way. You know, when you go parking? Yep. And it was one way and I thought, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. And I came home and I thought my dad's gonna know because my mom said, if you lie, I will always know. Mom will always know if you lie. And then you realize, no, they don't, you know, but you know what it is, it's the guilt. So my older one, within 12 hours, she'll say, you know, mom, I just wanna let you know. And I, I think it's the most horrible thing, but it's something like, yeah, you had a donut yesterday or I, I don't know, some frivolous thing, but yeah. in their head, it's a lie because they did not tell you the truth. Some kids will lie about their report card. Why? They don't have a safe environment to share because they know that they're going to get like lick-ins or punishments. You know what their mentality is? I'm not going to tell them. I'm going to sneak the report card. I'll have four days of fun and then I will handle the punishment. But they will not tell you. If you provide a safe environment, it's okay to fail it's, and embrace it so that failure is not feared. I mean, I love when Mello said what, and I heard this before, false evidence appearing real, right? Fear. And we really believe it's evidence of our incompetence. It's evidence that we are not good enough. But what if we switch it and say, wow, it's evidence that I am growing because we cannot build resilience without, without our what we call mistakes or our um, incompetence. So I was that child who, I went to UH and my first assignment was a C and I cried because I graduated. Yeah, I was like, a C? Get C's and that, that I mean, I thought I was a, a failure. You got a C? <laughs> I was in my first assignment on an essay and, you know, I'm a writer, even at school, I won writing competitions. Yeah. I graduated fourth in my class. I failed a trip because I did not want to do the speech for salutatorian. I could have used you. I did not <laughs> want to do the speech. So I thought I'll fail in my fourth quarter. So it wouldn't affect my, my grades because colleges look at the first three quarters back then. And I did that. I, I failed because I didn't want to do the speech. Now, I teach kids embrace that C. So I have kids who remind me of myself constantly checking. We didn't have headline, right? Constantly checking in. My, my teacher didn't upload my grade. Oh my gosh, it's an A, it's a B, it's a D, it's an F, it's an A. My, I think that's why Chelsea was meant to be in my life because she graduated with honors with the Fs, with the Ds, because what they do is they they average out your semester grades. So if you mm. have first, second quarter, third, so my daughter, we were, it was a drive-by graduation, right? Class of 2020. Right. They right. Uh, announced her, um, her um, being um, cum laude. And my older daughter was like, what the, wait, 
And I thought, this is why it needed to happen. So I can tell parents, don't worry about the grades. Grades do not define you. And you know what colleges are noting now? They want, like this year's SAT scores don't count. So I'm helping kids with their college entrance essays. Guess what the question is? Please describe how you overcame failure. I had someone straight A's, top, um, you know, like sports. Um, everything was just like on top. So his failure was was losing a grandparent, which is not really a failure. But if you are like so perfect on paper, how can you see before colleges wanted, I want, you know, of course they want volunteer work, but they want like to know who they are. That oh, is a life changing, um, talk about mindset rewiring. So you're, you cannot be, you know, a 3.8 is not good enough. And I was told that I only have a 3.8. My, my dad said that it's not good enough. And when I explained how grades don't define his worth, he's like, can, can you talk to my dad? I'm like, <laughs> oh, unfortunately wow. I, I cannot convince but if you're the only boy not to be um racial bias but if you you know only son mom from china mom from, and, and they know you don't understand what it means to have a korean mom you don't yeah. understand my mom was from japan but i think i don't know what happened it also depends how you were raised right she lost her mom at age nine lost her dad at age um 16 so i think you're you're Maybe your values are changed when you, you, when you experience trauma, you know, big, big time during the pandemic, my older one graduated from Pepperdine, multiple, multiple rejection after rejection, after rejection. Mm -hmm. But I have a good story about communication Please? and effectiveness. My daughter convinced her counselor at Pepperdine to use her Hawaiian, um, culture, you know how if you go to LCC or UH, you need to have that Hawaiian um, culture or a Hawaiian studies class to use that as an art credit for Pepperdine. And so we just said, what? And so she got the syllabus and she said, when you think about it, Hawaiian culture is a form of art because she didn't want to spend the hundred dollars on art supplies. She didn't want to take the, you know, drawing and ceramics and all that. And I said, okay, well, you can try. She says, mom, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do this. She was scared. And um, it was, a, it was a, a guy and I said, was he young? <laughs> so when she saved thousands of dollars, it would have been a summer class because yeah. she didn't want to graduate, right? You know, if you're, you're stuck in you that one credit, you need to take <laughs> a whole summer school and not graduate with your class. But to convince a Pepperdine counselor to take a Hawaiian studies credit for art, but she mentioned about like the Hawaiian, um, right? When you think about it, it is a form of art. You can talk about the sculptures, you can talk about the ideologies, you can talk about, I mean, anything, but for me, I wouldn't have accepted it, but you know, it shows like what you just said, how do you emotionally connect, how to communicate effectively with confidence. In fact, the harder the harder the challenge, embrace it more, the harder the challenge, it gives you more of an opportunity to test your own resilience, your own intestinal fortitude, your own mental strength. And I have to share this with regards to what your daughter did. It was art. And the reason I'm saying that is because guess what speaking is? It is art. And oh my gosh. She used the art of persuasion. She literally passed the class with her live session with this individual. So she was able to use either body language, use her looks. You can actually have evidence. And even though like the Hawaiian studies professor mm -hmm. would say that's not art, it's truly an opinion, which is why when I got that C, I look back and it was, I did not meet the professor's expectations. But if I gave it to another professor, I've had, I've done um, papers and when they get an 84, they're happy. I yeah. just recently yeah. helped someone, LCC. I normally don't do college, but it's a good friend. And she says, yeah, I got an 84. And part of me is like an 84, but they're happy. And then she redid it. And then she got a 90 something. But then I'm thinking, why am I judging my own worth based on someone else's opinion of the grade? Writing is not like math. Math, you get it wrong. It is wrong. Writing is all about, did you meet your teacher's perception of what an A is? So when you are crying and you get a C, 
you know, unfortunately, you know what teachers do a lot? If you're a C student, I help you, you get a C because in that teacher's head, I notice, mm -hmm. and another student who's an A who plagiarized gets the A because you set precedence. And if you're an A student, they don't even look at it sometimes. I mean, it's, I had a professor who actually said that. As a student, he actually put, I did drugs, all this stuff inside that no one caught it. He just did it as a test to see if the teachers really read it. We are really defining our worth incorrectly because it doesn't matter what the public said. I mean, I do the same thing. After every living it away, I've done like a handful of them. I think to myself, someone is going to say, that's a, that's a parent tip, that's stupid. And then thank God we have Deslin who says, people are going to criticize, that does not demean your value. And it means that they paid attention enough to criticize you, which I never even thought of, right? If someone disagrees with you, they gave you the time to actually look at it, Listen give their it. input, criticize you and tell you that you're incompetent. And so instead of internalizing it, you look at it as, wow, I'm that important that they took the time to criticize. And that changed my mindset. You know, with, with Mello too, it's like this having a mindset strategist in our team, Aloha, and, and attracting people like you. I'm thinking I could definitely, who cannot def, you know, utilize public speaking skills in the everyday life. Now, I love haters and I love doubters and I love naysayers because it makes me realize you, my friend, give me that extra push. You give me that extra umph. If somebody's always saying, you did a good job, you, Ricky, did a good job, guess what? I plateau. But when people continue to say negative things, insult you, or make fun of you, or say you're incompetent, my response to you folks, thank you. I appreciate Wow. You. I needed to hear that. <laughs> I appreciate you all so much. I needed to hear that because I allow people, um, even before the interview, um, I was told to, um, like just, I don't know, I had flyaways or something about my hair and it immediately put me on the spot because I, I don't, you know, and, I, and so I, I thought, why am I letting, right? Tiny, tiny things. Like when I'm caught on a mistake um, for math, <gasps> you made a mistake, Miss Karen. And if the parents are nearby, I think I'm judged on the sixth grade mistake or fourth grade mistake. And then I realize, oh, that just shows that I'm human, but it's not easy to do what you just said. You know, like, thank you. A lot of people are sensitive or they place any criticism as a personal attack. <laughs> so that's what I think you, you're just the your whole um, philosophy yes. on how we perceive failure or criticism. I did not know that about you. And, you know, and I think that's what makes people like who suffer. Like if you are an alcoholic and you turn into an alcoholic, like a, a, a counselor, oh, yeah, right. Or you are um, an abuser in the past and then you help, you end up, your path ends up to be like anger management and you help counsel people. And so with me, like you said, me struggling as a parent, I decided to pursue that and let me tell you, sometimes, you know, when they say parent coach, Karen Gibson, I think, wait, wait, oh, 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 that's me. And I just laugh. <laughs> <laughs> and then they, sometimes they don't even see my name, right? So it's like parent coach, we have the parent coach. And I think, um, wait, that, am I, you know, it's like the fake Oprah, right? You're a fake imposter, these things that we identify. And I've always wanted to be, I don't know, you know who Barbara Walters is? Of course. And I wanted to interview and someone said, you are interviewing. I might not be interviewing, you know, but I'm going to have the internationally awarded speaker soon. I, I asked uh, Ricky to <laughs> give me the honor to interview him. I interviewed Coach V last night and I'm realizing um, it doesn't matter how many people see it because sometimes it benefits me. And like Destin, it can benefit one person and maybe not today, maybe six, front, six months from now, someone stumbles across this interview and it changes their life. Maybe it makes them feel better about themselves. Maybe they think, hey, my daughter, my daughter needs to see this. And it's really weird how unplanned events can turn into like life-changing blessings right? Goosebumps, my dear. Yeah, I had a mini story, if you don't mind. I had a book signing at uh, Hawaii USA. 
So his grandma came up to me because I'm like, who? I'm, I was there for five hours. I didn't know if I was going to be twiddling my thumbs. I didn't know, you know, so you're sitting there and his grandma said, I am so glad to meet you. I saw your midweek article. That was back in May. She stumbled across that article, somehow found out that I was going to be at Hawaii USA the next day. So she came into the credit union and said, I want my two, I want the mama's got to let go book for, for two of her daughters. But she said, I'm going to read it first. And then someone else came and said, I want to give one to my fiance and my um, my future mother-in-law with a gift, gift um, card. And I thought, wow. Then I had one dad and I had to, no, he was like in his seventies. And he said, I don't have any uh, problems because my, my um, kids are adults already. And I had to, um, you know, okay, that's all right. And inside I'm thinking, <laughs> what a string. Uh, one of the employees said, hey, you know what? Someone just wants, um, I had to buy two for 2014. Mm. They, 14 of these and 14 of these, 28 books. I mistakenly heard seven of each. So I signed it. I came home and I looked at the money because they all they gave me cash. And I thought, oh, they wanted 14 more. It was over the weekend and my husband's like, you better tell them that because I shortchanged him, right? So the next, I said, Monday, I promised to... Um, drop off the signed copies. And I thought, wow, I could concentrate on that one father who said, I don't need this. Or, right, the 30 books that I sold that from, but you, isn't it weird? Your brain remembers that one thing. Yes. I could have all A's and that one person gives me a C and I think, wait, and that's what parents do. Oh, you got all A's, okay. So we're gonna be working on this B. You're right. Well, similar to what we do, me being a coach and you being a coach and just helping as many people as we can. What What is it that we remember that made us as strong in what we do today? It wasn't the wins. It was all of the failures that we experienced, all of the heartache that we experienced, all of the self-doubt that we experienced because people yes. are talking trash about us. That is what made us strong. So for those of you that are listening right now, I want you to realize something some of the best coaches you're going to run into are not the ones who live in the gray area. Make sure you have a background of who your coach is and the garbage, the garbage they've gone, they've gone through. Because if they've gone through a lot of garbage, they can help you avoid the same garbage you're going to go through. And also reframe how you see your children's mistakes. Yes. Right. Because sometimes like my daughter tried out for a cheer team, uh, did not make it all three years, wanted to try for varsity as a senior year without even being a cheerleader. And as a parent, you think you want to try to tell them, you know, maybe you shouldn't. Right. Mm. A lot of parents are like, maybe you shouldn't because you might experience failure. I encourage every parent do not um, prevent your children from failing. Because what you do when you say, you know what, you don't really know how to swim, you really want to try out for that swim team, what you're saying is, I don't believe in you, don't fail, don't try. Indirectly, even though you want to do it. To Indirectly, and even like, because nope. nope. I, I won't say it, and my daughters will say, I can tell by your eyes that you don't agree with this. <laughs> I'm like, no, you're even if, I mean, that your energy Right. Body Your language. children can hear body language like, yeah, go for it. You're going to do a great job, but they can feel. So you can just say something like, you know, I can feel that you're nervous. And you know what? Mom's nervous too, but I think you should go for it because it is not the result that matters. It's the fact that you tried. I love hearing where one of my daughter's friends tried out for the commandment swim team. She didn't really, you know, she knew that she wasn't going to be passing in order to be um you know competing you know in, in the star of the star sure. but she did it even though she didn't make it for final she didn't even make it for any of the you know the, the cuts no regrets but i want to do something you know why she did it to get out of her comfort zone yep i mean to do to be 17 willing to get out of her comfort zone i praise her parents for for actually not preventing her from like oh you know what i had I had a student at St. Louis, you know what? I don't know if you should go to the dance because we don't want you to embarrass yourself. Yeah. Whoa. Cause they didn't, I mean, he didn't really, um, I guess they didn't think that 
he could dance. They didn't know if any girl would say yes to him. They didn't want him to dance alone. And now you see people dancing by themselves. And I love, like my daughter would go to the movies by herself. And I thought I've only done that one time on Maui. I was pregnant, no one knew me. Cause in my head, I'm thinking they're looking at me going, oh, poor thing, she, she doesn't have any friends. <laughs> I, a friend just told me he went to Disneyland by himself pre COVID, but I thought, wow, that is something if you, right. But it's your perception. People watching can be an adventure and not see it as, oh my gosh, what are they gonna think of me? So if that's the one thing if parents teach kids, who cares what people think? This, this is my, my lesson for this week. I've been telling um, kids, it was a little uh, aquarium, one black and white goldfish, all orange and white. And they said, yeah, would you wanna be the black and white? Yeah, okay, so what if it's blue shirt day and you're the one only wearing yellow? Would you want to be like everyone else? Yeah, why? I guess I'd be kind of embarrassed. So do you really want to be the black and white fish or do you want, oh, I think I want to be like the other one. So my lesson is, but that black and white fish is unique. It's special, even though he's the only one. So it's rewiring at a young age to see that, so what? Cause you're going to forget sometimes, right? You know, the school pictures, you see these school pictures, everyone's wearing an Aloha shirt or everyone's wearing the uniform, except that one kid whose parent probably forgot that it was school picture day. <laughs> and so they're wearing their gray sweat, they're wearing their, their t-shirt with SpongeBob on it or something. <laughs> and, and everyone is wearing their Aloha shirt. The girls are wearing their moo's and they're just like, and you know, the kid that doesn't care, I admire that kid our philosophy as well as our value that we give back to the community which is to inspire one person at a time we here at breaking your barriers want to inspire one person at a time because guess what when you throw that rock into the ocean or, or rather into the lake what happens it becomes a ripple effect and that one person becomes the ripple effect because he now spreads or she now spreads the news that yes. they pick up from you and they affect other people in that lake. Now, it's a smile. you've heard stories, right? About that one person who was about to commit suicide that night. And then all of a sudden they see someone who just happened to smile at them. And they realize maybe not today, I'll live for another day. So we have no idea how impactful we are, you know, right. to our kids. So I tell kids, if your mom comes home screaming or your dad's in a bad mood, it has nothing to do with them. You know, it's stress from work, right? Because right. they internalize it. Oh, I, I think they're mad at me. Or they might yell at you because they don't have the patience to put up with whatever's going on at they're home. They're venting you know? from that day. That's right. Yes, yes. But to teach oh. little ones that, it's hard because when your mom is yelling at you. Yes. How can you not internalize that? I grew up, I grew up with the slipper. <laughs> you had the slipper method? <laughs> I grew up with the belt. Um, I use the, the Easy Bake Oven spatula, but I would hit, like, I broke so many of them because I would hit the table. I would hit everything except them. Um, I would just, I don't know, grab, like, their, their Bible sometimes, they, and then I would just slap it. And so we went to Walmart one day, and my daughter's like, hey, Mom, look, it's the spanking stick, and it was the Easy Bake Oven spatula. So even wow. though I didn't spank her, she saw it as a spanking stick because I spanked the table. I, I mean, I broke it. I broke the the many, many times. And so I jokingly say, I'm going to give my grandchildren the easy bake of it. <laughs> For those of you that are watching, before Karen shares her last point with you guys, and you guys better listen well, if you haven't making it, if you haven't made it to this far in a video interview, you need to stick around because what she's saying is worth its weight and then some in gold for your relationship with your family. Now, I want you to realize something for those of you who are listening today. You invest more time preparing for a vacation than yourself. I want you to realize that you need to invest in yourself. We cannot do it alone. That's why we, Karen and I, are here as coaches to make sure you've got that guide to help you get to that next level. So instead of investing in your next vacation by far, which is a heck of a lot more expensive, reach out to Karen, reach out to me, invest in yourself. And I guarantee you, it will change your life as well as your children's life. Now, with that said, 
I want you to listen to what Karen has to say. Karen, what would you like to share for the people who are still hanging out with us, listening to every single word you're sharing and every point of wisdom that you're giving today? And it's free, guys. It's free today. Rewind this. You know what? I'm going to offer anyone who mentions Ricky's name and this interview a half an hour complimentary coaching session because I think, um, and that this is what I'm here for, right? To make, there is no parenting 101 manual. So I'm here to make, make a resource available. I have all 100 parenting tips on my YouTube channel. So if you, um, you know, subscribe, it's letting go with Aloha. Instagram, message me, letting go with Aloha. And just let people, I have my website also, letting go with Aloha.com and let me know how I can be of service. Like Ricky said, you know, we are in this profession to give back to the community and to really help like my profession, help parents so that they can parent with peace, not with stress. And who does not want to build children who are resilient, respectful, right? And responsible and prepare them for adulthood because we cannot let our children to enter adulthood without the proper skills. Ricky, you help kids regarding communication skills, right? and just the whole public speaking and i'm here to help parents because face it our goal in my opinion is to pa prepare your children for life without you because we won't be there my my girls always say don't say that it's morbid but we will not be there so you want to leave a legacy and a legacy could start with a free complimentary coaching session and i can just you know just tell me what your struggles are and we can brainstorm together because sometimes, I mean, it takes a village, right? Like we all say. Don't take that offer for granted. Let's see, that 30 minutes will change your life. You reached out for a reason. You might as well reach out to a professional. You might as well listen to what she has to tell you. And more importantly, you owe it to yourself to share what your struggles are. And I promise you, she will take care of you. Karen, it was amazing. And I hate using that word because I use it a lot, but it was off the hook having you here today. Thank you for Thank being here. Thank you for, being Thank you for the opportunity. And I look forward to interviewing you soon. So I think parents need to know also how to teach public speaking skills, emotionally connecting with others, because without the ability to talk to people, mm -hmm. What are we? And it could even be with family members, right? We need to decrease the fighting, increase the peace. And I can't wait for the opportunity to interview you, Ricky. So thank you so much for this opportunity. It's been fun. I don't know why I was so nervous about it. It's been a lot of fun. <laughs> Karen Gibson, our local hero on Breaking Your Barriers, inspiring one person at a time. We'll see you guys on the next show. Have an amazing, amazing day. And Karen, aloha. Aloha. Thanks, Ricky.